I'm asking just to see you're a text asking. message. Yes, I am. You're, no. And you're getting really nervous and fidgety. I'm not getting nervous. I'm feeling very fucking uncomfortable. Why are you feeling uncomfortable? I if, if you asked me, I would like, yeah, you could look because I have nothing to hide. You're, you're you have some, so you have something to hide. You have not actually done that what ever are, in your. Past. What is it you're hiding? I'm not hiding. A then phone. just hold your phone and let me see what you wrote. I. I'm not hiding anything. Then, then hold your phone and let me see what you wrote. Okay, I'm gonna go. Liam, let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Glad to have you here. Today we have a little bit of a different video from the usual things we do. This is a live recording that a husband did after he caught his wife cheating now the way she reacts is really an obvious lie there are a lot of red flags to mention here so i thought we'd go through this together uh, and we'd comment on it a little let's get started you need a cigarette because you're call like, fuck. You need a cigarette. I'm gonna you can call your sister. I'm not going to harm you. I'm not going to hurt. I'm not going to put my hands on you. I don't feel comfortable. I'm not going to put my hands on you. I, you can call your sister. I tell you, I'm, I don't feel comfortable. I need to go. You can stay. You want, I thought you want to walk the dogs together. You can record whatever it is that you want to record. I'm going to walk my dogs with You're walking both the dogs. And talk to my sister and tell her how uncomfortable I feel right now. She's going to go to bed. It's well past her bedtime, and I hope she picks up. How are you going to... Like, I, I cannot. I cannot. I've, I've, you've known me for 11 years. I would never put my hands on you. I don't believe you. What? That's mine. Those are mine. Those aren't yours. I'm asking just to see you're a text asking. message. Yes, I am. You're, no. And you're getting really nervous and fidgety. I'm not getting nervous. I'm feeling very fucking uncomfortable. Why are you feeling uncomfortable? I just, I, if you asked I me, I would like, yeah, you could look because I have nothing to hide. You're, you're you have some, so you have something to hide. You have not actually done that what ever are, in your past. What is it you're hiding? I'm not hiding a phone. Then just hold your phone and let me see what you wrote. I am not hiding anything. Then, then hold your phone and let me see what you wrote. Okay, I'm going to go. Yeah. All right, so a couple things here that are pretty obvious now first off when people lie they often don't confront the person because uh, it will tell on themselves that they are lying so they avoid eye contact all the time notice how she's not facing him she's running around the house turning her back whenever she can uh, she's literally fleeing from the scene so she wants to go out instead of confront this man supposedly because she feels scared that he might beat her up or something like this uh, but just from a psychological point of view, when someone is hiding something or lying, like they will put objects in between in between you and them uh, if they are forced to face you or they'll just turn their back, they'll avoid eye contact, you know, they'll do all those things. Like the avoiding eye contact is 101 uh, on lying, you know, everybody can pick up on this. So massive red flag. Another thing is uh, when people got nothing to hide, they really don't care if you look through their stuff right and if you if you've seen um people stealing in real life like for example they try to steal something from a shop and they hide it in their backpack or something and you know when people ask them like the cashier or something ask them can i please check your bag madam or sir a normal pol uh, a normal person will say yeah sure sure i don't mind i've got nothing to hide you're gonna see milk and eggs and like i don't care you can check my backpack uh, everything i've paid for that's what normal people would react. But people who are guilty, who know that they are, uh, you know, feel full of crap, they will start to uh, say some, get emotional, you know, like, oh, are you calling me a thief? Uh, are you, are you uh, ins insinuating that I've stolen something, you know? They, they always play this card of uh, blaming the, the accuser, you know, because, because they, they can't defend themselves, so they turn on the attack. So this woman, instead of saying, yeah, sure, you can check my phone, I've got nothing to hide. Yeah, this guy was simping over me, but I didn't say anything. I didn't, didn't reply to him. I didn't say nothing, right? Uh, instead, she she starts to blame him. Oh, you're accusing me. You don't believe in me. Oh, you're calling me a, a cheater, whatever. It's always the same. It's really a pathetic attempt, right? It, it, it's just to not say, yes, indeed, look at the phone. I've cheated. Like, at, at that point, they know they've lost, right? So... Another massive red flag. It's obvious to me that this woman indeed has cheated. She's not afraid of, of him beating her. All right, don't act. Don't try to fool us. We all know what you did. But now let's continue, guys. Yeah, let's go. Right now. 
I can't. I made her cry? Yeah, because you're you're cornered. I'm cornered. Yes, you, because you're you, because you're doing something that's wrong. That's why. If, if you, then let me see. Hold your phone and let me see if you're not doing anything wrong. Doing a fucking thing that's wrong in the fact that you're I can't. Here's another point. Uh, usually when people lie, they, they like to be a, as generous, uh, not generous, excuse me, as generic as possible. So they don't like to talk about specific things because then lying is harder, you know, they have to make a better story. So notice how this guy is asking really specific things like uh, this one person, uh, you know, was flirting with you. So I want to check... Uh, a specific moment in the chat to see how you reacted or responded you know really specific things and and she her response is uh i just can't i'm gonna go out you know so she doesn't address specific information she turns it into something more uh, general or she just flees or uh, she responds if she has to respond to the question with uh, uh come on don't, don't be stupid you know uh, don't say that's the case that's impossible so really fleeing away from specific things look if the if the dog could talk he will, the, the the dog knows right this dog right here knows that this woman has cheated everybody knows even the objects in the house these shoes they know she has cheated as well everybody knows she's not getting uh, away from anything she won't lie to anybody with this uh, pathetic little situation i'll only give her props for not crying because a lot of women will react in such a way that uh, they won't even get as far as to start with the coping and the trying to uh, change the topic of the conversation. They will just burst out in tears and say, ah, oh, how dare you accuse me, you know, like acted out, uh, acted out emotionally. Because I saw the text messages that I read that you wrote with someone that's a little bit thirsty on your end. Again. <laughs> it's kind of like... Yeah, notice again, instead of addressing the, the problem, this specific... Thing. she says oh i can't uh, what a good argument honestly if, if sometimes i if at any point excuse me i'm in a in a court or something I, i've done something bad and the judge tells me uh, we have a ta we have you on tape on camera doing this bad thing I, I, my argument will be oh, i can't i can't <laughs> so pathetic yeah on your end so I wanted to give an update and also a background on the video you saw of me asking my wife if I could see text message between a friend, a guy who says a friend, just friends. We they go on hikes together with the dogs, and I said, okay, can we see text messages? So she walks out the. Door before this guy continues so the it's just a friend argument we all love it <laughs> you love to hate that ar that argument you know uh, such a meme at this point it's it's always the friend she tells you not to worry about um but regardless of that i just wanted to mention this is why when two people are married and not even married when they are serious about their relation they should not have a best friend you can have friends, maybe you know them from childhood, or maybe you go on a mixed group with both men and females, and yeah, there are some guys there. Uh, but but you, look, here's the thing, you can have your friends from the opposite gender, but you can't have this best friend who you talk f uh, with for four hours a day, and you, and you meet every second day, and you go out, and you go to clubs, and you go hiking. It's just a red flag. Traditional woman... When they are married, they don't have this one best friend with whom they spend the same amount of time uh, that they spend on their husband, you know. It's just a red flag, guys. When women do it, when men do it, it just always leads to s some cheating, you know, in most of the cases. Or it leads to them having feelings, uh, going too far. Maybe they don't cheat all the way, but they kiss or maybe they, they just catch feelings for the other person and it, it all becomes, uh, you know, more complex. So just my advice is if you have a significant other that, j that just spends so much time with another person, so-called friend, uh, just know that in like 95% of the cases, it ends really bad. Dora, you saw to call her sister. And I sit and wait. She comes back, cries her sister about whatever, has her sister 
on speaker saying, my sister wants to speak to you. Her sister says, you need to leave. I just flew five and a half hours across the country into another country to visit my wife and spend time with her and we were supposed to go on a road trip. And now she doesn't feel safe with me after we've been together, 11 years together, seven years married. Asking a simple question, can I see the text message between this friend of yours? No longer feels safe around me when I've never ever hit her, raised the hand to her, grabbed her, anything ever in our relationship. Now she doesn't feel safe. She wants me to leave. I'm in a different country. I don't know anyone. I don't have any friends. And she says, go back. I'm completely crushed. Completely, my heart is completely crushed. So, I left. I respected her wishes. I didn't want any. I didn't want to get arrested or have anything because she's saying she doesn't feel feel safe around me. I'm like, okay, so I left. I she booked a hotel. I stayed, and I found my way back to the states. I am with my family because I just can't be alone right now after someone just completely disrespected me. My wife completely disrespected me after all these years. And I'm, I'm, my heart is, is shattered. And um, yeah, I, I, how could, how could you kick someone out of your house after they, you fly five and a half hours to a different country? I don't understand how you can do that to someone, your husband, let alone. I would never in a million years do that to my wife. If she asked me about something and I say, no, you have to go. I don't feel safe. You're asking me this question. You have to go. I'm devastated, man. But I recorded it because I just needed evidence that I wasn't crazy, that her reaction was like, and I posted it just so that I can get others to see like, I wasn't asking a lot and I'm not crazy like what's happening. No, what this guy did is absolutely correct because if he hadn't filmed this, she could have just lied that he indeed did fact beat her or something like this. She could have lied. And maybe the court uh, wouldn't have fallen for it, even though a lot of times it does. But even if the court uh, didn't fall for it, his reputation will still be ruined just by these women telling those things because maybe her friends will believe it, her family will believe it, you know, like someone will believe it. So really great that he did a video to show that he didn't touch her at all. Uh, good decision making by, th by this man. And look, here is what I refer to as doing a 180. Now, I don't think that this woman showed red flags during those 11 years. Um, th this is what I mean that uh, a lot of women, uh, not a lot, but some men and some women do this where you marry one person uh, and, you know, it's just their colors didn't really show up, you know, and sadly, both men and women uh, cheat in very high numbers. Now, I don't know the percentages, but in very high numbers, more, way more than it should be. And it, it's honestly, guys, it's really, I, I'd never understand cheating. Like, if you ask this woman, why did you cheat on your husband that you've been together for 11 years? What do you bet, guys, that she'll tell you all oh, because uh, this other guy paid me more attention? Of course she's gonna say that and well what do you expect like from what i understand this man lives and work uh, excuse me works in another country or has been there for a while and in the meantime this woman is going on hikes with other men for hours at a time maybe multiple days a week it's, it's like what do you expect to happen man this is why it's cheating guys is never oh i slipped i didn't know it will happen no it's always a series of decisions i know it's not right to talk with other men when I have a husband, uh, but I'm going to chat with this man for a lot of hours. I know that it's not good for him to be flirting with me and for me to not stop him right away. No, uh, she, she let him pass, right? Maybe in the beginning this woman wasn't flirting back, but she allowed the other guy to flirt with her instead of blocking him or, tell, or telling him to go to F himself. So she allowed in multiple instances this man to get closer and closer and closer until she finally cheated. Cheating is never something that, oh, you know, it, it happened in two seconds, it happened too fast. No, it's always, uh, you know, led 
by multiple decisions of cheating. I don't get it. Well, I do get it. She was lying, but it's just how, how you can do that to someone, how you can completely disrespect someone like that when I've never... Yeah, it's just... Yeah, I don't know. Thank you guys for watching the video. But I just wanted to give you guys an update and background on what actually happened. And now I'm back in the States and, uh, yeah, trying to pick up the pieces because I'm completely crushed. So here ends the TikTok, uh, his story. And this man, of course, quite devastated, as you should be after 11 years of marriage, holy crap. Well, 7 years of marriage, 11 years knowing the other person. And probably you never saw red flags, right? Uh, and at one moment you, you suddenly have been cheated and it's all over, right? Like, probably in the morning he, he was unaware of all of this and the evening they were already separating. So, really bad case. I just wanted to showcase uh, sort of the lying tactics that people try to use. Uh, of course, these tactics are really obvious, right? I don't think it's hard to pick up on them. The, the harder thing is for people to leave. Like, I've seen men and women um, catch on these red flags, but start to kind of like forgive, but not quite forgive. It's just accept uh, or, or try to, yeah, yeah, tr try to defend the other person. So, for example, men will say, well, yes, she's talking to all the people, uh, but they are just friends. Uh, it, it's, I, I trust her. Look, you should trust your partner, but you should not trust him when there is a clear red flag. You have a gut feeling telling you about this. Your instincts are telling you that something is not right. So if your girlfriend uh, goes on clubs two days a week, uh, you know, it, it's a red flag. And no matter how much you try to accept it or, or say that, well, for her it's normal to be surrounded by so many men, uh, you know, uh, oh, it's okay, no, I trust her. No, you're not trusting her, you want to trust her, there's a difference. You're not feeling safe, because if you will feel safe, you wouldn't have this gut feeling, you just want so hard to feel safe, to make yourself think that everything is okay, that you're willing to accept everything. And of course, uh, women do this as well with men. They just uh, turn a blind eye to multiple red flags because they want to, uh, you know, force themselves to feel in a way that they don't really feel. So that was the point, guys. Leave me your comments about what you think. Have you had a similar experience? And thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.